And welcome back here inside the CenturyLink Field Event Center. I'm Dave Erickson with Everyman Driver. We're here at the 2013 Seattle Auto Show, and today we're going to learn about the latest offerings from Volvo for 2015. Uh, this is a great time for Volvo. We're here to talk about the V60 Sports Wagon. Uh, this is actually the V60 Sports Wagon's, uh, I'll say, West Coast debut. Uh, we had this car at the, the New York Auto Show uh, back in the spring when we announced that the V60 would be coming to the U.S. market. So this is a pre-production model. It will come, it will go on sale in January uh, as part of our new model lineup. Uh, and it will be a model year 15 vehicle. The, the interesting thing is uh, it, it, it comes in a refreshed model, which is kind of interesting since it's debuting here, but it's a refreshed in the rest of the world. New fender, new bumpers, um, new hood, rear, rear quarter panels, etc., etc. A lot of interior changes, new census system with the instrument panel. This is all new for, uh, for the car globally. We'll announce the pricing in probably mid-December before the car goes on sale. Uh, but the wagon is back in Volvo's lineup. Most specifically, the biggest changes that you're going to see with this car, with the V60, when it comes out, along with the XC60 and the S60 uh, sedan and, and, uh, and crossover, it will be one of the first models with our new Drive E engine. Now, uh, Volvo announced about two years ago the fact that we would be moving to an entirely, uh, our entire engine family would be nothing but four-cylinder engines. That was the direction we're going from the standpoint of we, we found a way that we could use turbocharging and supercharging to get the same performance, horsepower and torque out of a four-cylinder engine that we could out of a six-cylinder engine. Uh, the fuel economy, however, would be greatly improved and the CO2 emissions would be greatly improved. So with the advent of the CO2 requirements in Europe, uh, fuel economy requirements here in the United States, this is a strategy that we have embarked upon to achieve those targets. Now, uh, we're not going to just wipe out all the five-cylinder and six-cylinder engines out of our model lineup uh, immediately. We will cycle them out of our uh, model lineup, but the first four cylinder engines, the first four uh, drive E engines will be in the V60, the S60, uh, and the XC60. So when this car is launched in January, it will have three engine variants. That's not one of them. <laughs> this car will be powered. You'll have an option to go with the, uh, the T5, five cylinder engine, uh, the two and a half liter. Uh, engine is, it, that has been in our model lineup uh, for quite a while in other cars. Uh, 250 horsepower, uh, 266 pound-feet of torque. So that gives you a perspective where that T5 engine uh, fits into our model lineup. You also have the opportunity to get a T6 in the uh, V60 R design model. Three-liter three engine uh, putting out 325 horsepower and 354 pound-feet of torque. Now, the new Drive E engine will come, again, four cylinders, will produce 240 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque. So, almost exactly what the five cylinder engine produces in terms of horsepower and torque. Now, the beauty of this four cylinder engine family is that we will be able to dial up the horsepower and the torque in relation to what kind of vehicle it's in, in terms of the size of the vehicle. So we'll have a, a lot of variance with this four-cylinder engine that it will be upwards of from 240 to more than 300 horsepower eventually. Okay, so uh, I know we still have a few minutes. I am happy to entertain any questions if I might be able to answer the them. MPG? Yes. Did you say the estimated MPG on uh, no hard and fast numbers, but it's going to be around 30 miles per gallon. Okay. That's, that's what we're estimating. Now, all the EPA numbers uh, won't be finalized until uh, December. December. Uh, yes, that with the T5 and the T6 engines, it will be available initially in all-wheel drive. Uh, with the, uh, the four-cylinder engine, it will be front-wheel drive only initially. In case everybody wanted, uh, didn't miss Tom's question, 
you know, since wagons aren't that popular, what was it that dr kind of drove us to bring this car back over here? Was it Volvo owners? Uh, kind of a combination of, of Volvo owners and the marketplace. We originally got out of the wagon market with the V50 and V70. We canceled those cars because of the sharp decline in wagon sales in the U.S. And we were a leader in wagon sales. Uh, but the, the market in, in terms of that segment has more or less flattened. And we anticipate that it's not going to go down, that it's going to stay flat, or, or, and then we'll eventually start to come back up, especially if it's a nice-looking wagon. And we feel very strongly that the styling of this particular car meets that need. And yes, there was a lot of interest from Volvo owners to bring back a wagon. When are you going to bring back a wagon? You know, we want that, that option. So, all right, the, the, you know, the interest was there. So the car was on sale in Europe. We had purposely made the choice not to bring it to the United States back in 2010. Um, but, you know, watching the market, watching our, the segment, listening to our customers, all right, it was worth uh, bringing it back. So here it is. Yeah. Ah, diesel. Uh, diesel's interesting. It's uh, the the. This is where it becomes a, more of a business decision. Uh, it costs ungodly amounts of money uh, to homologate diesel engines in the U.S. The EPA requirements, the certification requirements, are really expensive. Uh, and it's not a business priority to invest all that money. We don't see the ROI on it right now to, to, uh, to do that, to where we, we think that the diesel sales in the U.S. are going to support that. <laughs> Chevy even has a diesel passenger car now. Volvo doesn't. <laughs> well, you're going to see a, uh, uh, probably in the next couple, you know, we already have a plug-in hybrid on sale, plug-in hybrid diesel on sale in Europe. <coughs> and I think within two years we'll probably have, we will have a plug-in hybrid gasoline-powered car in the U.S. So, last question. Yes. Manual transmission. No, you will not see manual transmissions. What you will see is paddle shifters, if you so desire. Uh, we kind of have that philosophy that manual transmissions are a thing of the past. And if you don't believe me, ask anyone who races or builds Formula One cars. <laughs> and that'll wrap it up for this episode of Everyman Driver here on assignment at the 2013 Seattle Auto Show. I'm Dave Erickson. Thanks so much for watching. And if you haven't already, please click on that subscribe button. That way you'll receive updates on each new video upload. We'll see you next time.